endless waves of sand, blistering winds, temperatures soaring above 45 degrees Celsius. This is Egypt's western desert, where rain barely falls, where almost nothing grows, and where survival is a daily battle against the heat. Yet, against all odds, Egypt had a daring idea to flood part of this desert. Not by accident, but by design. Imagine rivers cutting through dunes, orchards rising from salt-crusted earth, even towns with only sand. A second Nile Valley carved by human hands. But how? How do you move enough water to reshape the world's largest desert? How do you farm salt-crusted land under burning skies? And can this bold plan really give life to the lifeless? Egypt's story has always revolved around water. The Nile River, its heartbeat, feeds the people, powers the cities, and waters the crops. But here's the problem. Nearly all of Egypt's 100-plus million people are squeezed into just a tiny slice of land. The vast majority live along the narrow Nile Valley and Delta, which make up less than 6% of the country's area. That's a lot of people fighting for very little space. As Egypt's population skyrocketed, so did its challenges. More mouths to feed meant a growing food gap. More demand for water meant rising water stress. And with the same limited land, cities and farms were running out of room. So what was the solution? Egypt needed to expand beyond the Nile and fast. That's where the Toshka Lake centered the picture. But this wasn't a brand new idea. Decades ago, Egypt dreamed of something much bigger, a bold plan to turn empty desert into a thriving new valley. They called it the New Valley Project, and right at its center was Toshka, a stretch of untouched land about 225 kilometers south of Aswan. It was pesticide-free, untouched by modern farming, and full of potential. But why Toshka? Because the Toshka Depression, a natural bowl in the desert, sat just west of Lake Nasser, the world's third largest reservoir. And here's the key. During high floods, Lake Nasser had a spillway designed to release extra water into Toshka. In 1998, heavy rains in Sudan and Ethiopia caused the Nile to swell to record levels. For the first time, water surged into Toshka, creating the first of several lakes. By 2001, the Toshka Lakes covered an enormous 1,600 square kilometers, a chain of lakes born in the desert. But Egypt wasn't going to leave it to chance. If water could reach the desert naturally, why not take control and make it happen on demand? And so the gamble began. But how do you force water into one of the driest places on Earth? Now, flooding the desert on purpose, that's not something you do by simply opening a gate. Moving water on such a massive scale needed serious engineering. And here, rising from the shores of Lake Nasser, stands Egypt's answer. The Mubarak Pumping Station, the beating heart of this impossible project. Look at this marvel, a colossal structure that lifts water 54 meters straight up. Inside, 24 mighty vertical pumps work tirelessly. Each one moves enough water to fill an Olympic swimming pool in seconds. Together, they push an unbelievable 350 cubic meters every second. Do the math, that's 7.8 billion gallons of water marching into the desert every single day. But here's what makes it truly special. The entire lower section lives underwater while the upper floors bake in the desert sun. Now, how do you build something that survives 50 degrees Celsius daytime heat and near-freezing nights? The engineer's solution? 200,000 cubic meters of special concrete and 30,000 tons of steel, enough to build three Eiffel Towers. And just look where that water goes next, the Sheikh Zayed Canal, a man-made river cutting through the endless sands. This 80-kilometer aquatic highway branches into four smaller channels, stretching roughly 260 kilometers in total. Together, they're designed to transform over 2,340 square kilometers of pure desert. But is this just some simple ditch? Hardly. We're talking about a channel plunging 6 meters deep with a 30 meter wide base that expands to around 60 meters at the top. Every slope is engineered at a precise 2 to 1 ratio, a mathematical masterpiece designed to defy the Sahara's shifting sands. Now here's the real question. How do you even build something this massive in the world's harshest desert? Let me tell you, it was anything but easy. Digging the canal meant moving a staggering 88 million cubic meters of earth, seven times more than what was needed for the Aswan High Dam. 
And that was just the start. Workers had to pour concrete under the blistering desert sun, where temperatures often soared past 43 degrees Celsius. To keep the concrete stable, massive cooling systems were installed, ensuring that the concrete never exceeded 7 degrees Celsius during mixing and curing, an essential step to prevent cracking. Yet, heat wasn't the only enemy. In this part of the Sahara, sandstorms are relentless. They can bury canals, clog pumps, and block water flow within hours. The solution? Engineers created wind and sandstorm breakers, rows of drought-resistant trees planted on both sides of the canals, acting as living walls against the shifting dunes. All of this effort would have been worthless without power. Dedicated high-voltage lines, 220 kilovolts, were installed, connecting the pumping station directly to the Aswan High Dam's electrical grid. Backup diesel generators and a full substation ensure the pumps keep running 24-7, even during power outages. Still, the desert fights back. At first, things seemed to work. Water spread and the land turned green. But then, trouble started. By 2012, after years of low Nile flows, the lakes began to shrink. Most dried up completely. Only a few small pools remained. So, what went wrong? The first problem was the climate. Rainfall in the upstream countries dropped, which meant less water flowed into Lake Nasser. Then came the heat. The Sahara's scorching sun evaporated the water faster than expected. And the soil? That was another challenge. The land around the lakes had high salt levels, making farming much harder than planned. Critics claimed that only 5% of the area was actually usable for agriculture. And then there was the wall. A gigantic granite barrier, 7 kilometers long, stood in the way right where engineers needed to extend canals and expand farming. The solution? Engineers used a staggering 8,000 tons of explosives, breaking apart the ancient rock to open a path for water and roads. Despite these efforts, by the early 2010s, the project was in trouble. Costs had soared into the billions, farms struggled, infrastructure remained incomplete. Many questioned whether this was just another ambitious desert scheme doomed to fail. For years, equipment sat idle, the desert, patient as always, seemed to be winning. But Egypt wasn't ready to give up. In 2014, the country tried again, this time aiming higher. The new plan? Reclaim up to 1 million fadans, about 4,200 square kilometers for farming. Work restarted at full speed. Thousands of workers returned and machinery roared back to life. New water lifting stations were built. Progress was finally visible. So far, over 430,000 fadans have been reclaimed, and today, about 217,000 of them are already producing crops – wheat, corn, grapes, and dates. More than 2.5 million date palms are being planted. Why? Because Egypt has big plans – to become a top exporter. But it's not just dates. Wheat silos have been built, ready to store hundreds of thousands of tons. And the results? Today. Egypt produces 550,000 tons of wheat every year from Tashka lands alone. And there's more. Road networks are growing fast, with over 3,000 kilometers of new highways built in Upper Egypt. And that's just the start. By the next planting season, another 40,000 to 60,000 fadans will be reclaimed for farming. But what about the lakes? After years of drought, nature took a surprising turn. In 2020, record-breaking floods in Sudan pushed Lake Nasser to its limits. Water spilled once again into the Tashka Depression, refilling the old lakes. In 2021, new lakes formed north and south of the main basin, expanding the water's reach. Agriculture boomed, the desert turned green again. Now, solar-powered irrigation, drip systems, and smart farming are being introduced. The desert may still be harsh, but Egypt is learning how to work with it, not against it. If you think the Tashka Lakes project is impressive, wait until you see what Australia is planning. Imagine turning the outback, a land of scorching heat and endless sand, into a massive inland sea. Could it actually work? Click here to watch our video on Australia's bold plan to reshape its landscape. Make sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a comment with your thoughts, and turn on notifications so you never miss our next big story on groundbreaking engineering projects.